So, beside that, kita nak go for to uh, you already cover the Eulerian and Lagrangian because these are the two things that describe the uh, fluid motion. And not just that, uh, we also have need to consider what we call the Stokes Drift. Okay, so what is Stokes Drift? Okay, imagine you are in an ocean wave. Okay, there's a single particle and you letak one debris ke, or there's a bird, you know, just just hanging around okay, on the surface of the ocean. Uh, you can kind of notice it will move in a circular path at each wave passes. They can move in a circular path, tapi they can move towards the wave direction juga. Okay. Boleh tahu kan, dia akan move so, Macam tu Macam tu Macam tu, macam tu. Okay. Kind of notice You're going to move that way okay. So, stoke drift In deep, deep water wave Is quite different From the shallow water wave So, the red circle represent the Position uh, Of a massless particle Moving with the flow velocity so the light blue tu dia bagi you punya trajectory of the motion. The white dots, uh, you can actually see uh, yeah, daripada atas sampai kat bawah, dia punya loop diameter dia decrease downward. The mean Eulerian horizontal velocity below the wave trough is zero. So kita observe that the wave period experienced by a fluid particle near the free surface is different from the wave period as a fixed horizontal position. Okay. So, dekat sini, dia jadi fixed. Yang ni, dia tak jadi fixed. Dia tak experience the fixed. Okay. So, what about This is the shallow water lah, shallow. Similarly, the red circle present, you can see this area. It's not fixed juga. Because they are influenced by the depth. The depth dia tak cukup untuk dia jadi fix on the same place. And the area yang dia cover pun tak cukup orbital. Compare to this one. Nampak ni lebih orbital. Okay. For the shallow water wave, dia tak nampak orbital lah. It's kind of like oval shape. Okay. So, back to our story. Story on the equation, non-linear. Dalam x vision ni, okay, the velocity dia yang digunakan dalam continuity and momentum equation dia, dia pakai Lagrangian velocity. Okay. Tapi not just that, it use the mixture of Eulerian, which is the E plus uh, velocity of S. Velocity of S is the velocity of the Stokes. The one that I mentioned before, Stokes. So, Eulerian velocity ni used for sediment transport. Yang govern the uh, sediment transport. And then, Stoke drift govern the energy. This is energy from the short wave balance from the wave module. How much energy? Sebab stoke drift ni bergantung kepada energy. Berapa banyak energy yang diperlukan. Okay. So, velocity dalam flow module related to the Eulerian, Eulerian velocity. UE dan VE. Because apa ada UE and VE? 
4 x and y and of course bila ada u kita ada v u e kita ada v e and u s kita ada v s ok so u s represent the stokes drift in x and y direction the stoke drift is calculated with 2.4 Four four in which the wave group, when you short wave energy, and direction are obtained from the wave action balance. So wave action balance, ambik mana? Di dekat wave module. B, you don't have to worry about this. This one is automatically calculated lah inside the X bridge. You just you just need to understand uh why, what is happening inside the code. Apa yang dia consider inside dia punya formulation. And how hard it is uh, to simulate such difficult uh, complex interaction between flow, wave. Uh, bukan sekadar kita pergi tengok sampling, kita tengok okay ini wave gerak macam ni, sediment macam ni. That is just monitoring yang you buat FYP sampling and base model. But in order for you to do research at master level, PhD level, you need to understand what what happened behind it. Kalau nak katakan hari tu bis profile macam ni, bis profile tu kau jadi macam tu, apa yang menyebabkan jadi macam tu? How, what influence the stock bridge? What influence the um, velocity, Euler university, lava jam city? So this thing yang akan bagi you much more understanding on what happening uh you know influence the movement of the flow itself okay the, the resulting yang tadi tu momentum equation dia akan jadikan dia sebagai nama je lah momentum equation juga cuma nama dia adalah uh nama dia apa ni jadi general uh, is it uh lagrangian mean kan momentum So, daripada Lagrangian tu, dia pecahkan. So, this is the diffusion abaction term. And then, dia ada dia punya wave forcing here. You can see wave forcing. Viscosity juga ada. And of course, dia punya water level, level gradient. And also, dia punya friction, shear stress. Okay. So, kat sini, dia bagi tahu dah. Okay. Kalau... Kalau... So, so. I think it's uh, or, uh, wind shear stresses and then are the bed shear stresses and then the punya eta is the water level fx the wave induced stresses and then stresses induced by vegetation horizontal viscosity coriolis coefficient okay so coriolis coefficient pun dia consider juga dalam ni walaupun sebenarnya tak uh, main peranan besar tapi it's just a small coefficient included okay okay note that the shear stress term are calculated with the Eulerian velocities as experienced by the bat and not with the GLM velocities as can be seen in 2.45 so sini because of uh, Eulerian ni dia for the by the bed sebab apa bed ada sediment transport so for sediment transport dia pakai eulerian because sediment is very small kalau you nak kira by lagrangian particles is going to be very complex okay so this is the long low frequency wave in x beach surf beat versus see ada banyak wave train ya yeah? you can actually see with train so surf beat lah. 
Okay. So the bad friction associated with mean current and long wave is included via the formulation of the bad shape and stress. Okay, so ada banyak bad friction punya formulation. Okay, the most famous famous one used in the experience is the one this Chazy ni. Relevant coefficient, the C one. Okay. okay, this one I think you can uh, look in the uh, params.txt and kita akan, when you do it, you can notice uh, some uh, case use bad friction formulation of Chazy ni or Manning ni. Okay. Values of the drag coefficient for different seabed sediment grain size and similarly for bed when you form scenario has been uh, empirically derived from field and laboratory data. So there, all this bad friction formulation is the one yang coming from the literature review. The one yang they have what? Banyak field work, laboratory data in previous study and then they conclude it here for you. So you just pick here between these uh, five formulation in order for you to implement in your studies okay okay so uh, to review what we have learned up until now okay this is the subtitle zone and then you add the intertidal zone you add the dune or cliff here okay di mana dekat intertidal zone lah berlakunya low mid ke, ataupun high Water level, tidal, okay, tidal, and then kat sini swash zone. Sini berlakunya roller, okay, roller that happen uh, during the uh, in the wave module, okay. And then kat sini trolling dia berlakunya refraction, diffraction that can contribute to the interaction between the sedimentation. So, kat sini yang sedimentation punya interaction happening. Dan kat sini juga kalau yang ada banyak dissipation. Kalau ada veggie tables. Kalau ada uh, bad friction here. So, semuanya berlaku dekat situ. So, yeah. Okay. If you have any questions so far, you can uh, you can put all the question compile question dekat dalam uh, Google Classroom punya question tab. Okay, so let's go back to this equation. This is the one that uh, we mentioned before the GLM equation. So the fx. I'm sorry, my mouse doesn't work that will try to change there's a point okay for the fvx and fvy are the stresses induced by vegetation so where is this fvx and fvy which are the equation in okay so here the fvx and fvy what about fx and fy I said, what juga adalah the wave forcing, radiation stresses. Tapi the FVX, FVY are the stresses induced by vegetation. So the, all of this still wave forcing coming from the short wave action wave module. Damping by vegetation. Yang tadi lah. The presence of aquatic vegetation within the area of wave propagation. They can not only result in wave dissipation, but also damping of infragravity wave or mean flow. So since both long wave and mean flow are fully resolved with uh, the nonlinear shallow water pressure, the effect of vegetation can be modeled using a drag force, which can be directly added to the momentum equation previous slide this one so directly added into the momentum equation where cd is about drag coefficient vegetation steam uh, stem diameter is the vegetation density vegetation height for layer so this one we 
uh, might or we might not go in to do some practice on it because uh, example that we have uh, we have we do have some example on the vegetable but I'm not sure we're going to do it in the tutorial but I will show you if we have got some time so should I not about mangrove okay so uh, mangrove we can just put the diameter and then density much of the vegetation height so it can help to uh, damp the infragravity wave. Sebab apa? Erosion lah yang my peranan yang banyak dalam uh, uh, infragravity wave. Infragravity wave ni bagi banyak uh, impact dalam erosion punya deposition punya fenomena. Okay. Okay, wind. Okay, so dia kata seterusnya dalam ni kita cari pula. The first term on the right hand side of the momentum equation A represent the forcing due to the wind stress. Okay. The first term. What is the first term? Okay. This is the T S X. It's not T the title. T S X. Sigma. T S X. It's not sigma. Someone told me what is it? I forgot. The symbol already. Okay, the kata kat sini, rho ni the density of air, CD is the wind drag coefficient, the wind velocity. So the wind stress is turned off by default. Okay, default is turned off but it can be turned on specifying a constant wind velocity. Kalau you nak put uh, velocity in there, when wind velocity. Okay. Any questions so far? So basically that is the for the flow module. For module, kita ada beberapa, kita ada Lagrangian method, kita ada Eulerian method and then dalam Lagrangian tu, dia generalize into Lagrangian punya mean formulation where everything is included in the including the wave forcing, the wind, the vegetation in order for the to govern the flow. So you have any question, you can just I compile it and put it in the Google Classroom and I will definitely going to answer it during the Q&A session. Okay. So again, what are the differences between Lagrangian and Eulerian punya description? This one you can just uh, put it or can answer it. You can summarize it in like one, two sentence. Okay. This is the review of some math operation. I'm not going to go through this one, but just want to show you uh, there's a different of math operating system, Laplacian operator gradient or math. I'm not going to use it, but just want to show you. Uh, uh, that's all. Okay, that's all. Math is going to be very useful if you know what it means. So if you have time, you can take a look on what is divergence okay okay Okay, before we end our session, I would like you guys to uh, spend like five minutes to watch this video. It's a gradient and partial derivative. Because why is it very important? Because most of you when your equation here is governed by partial derivative. This is the six more here, partial derivative. So what is exactly this partial derivative? Maybe most of you just tak perlu faham pun the math behind it but why is it there? What, what's the importance of this partial derivative and the gradient here? So we're going to watch this uh, five minute YouTube so you guys can uh, have a bit idea what's happening here. Okay, put it into full screen mode.
Suppose we have a function of two variables. We have the variable x. We have the variable y. And we have z, which is a function of both x and y. Suppose that we pick one value for x, and we keep x at this one value as we change the value for, for y. Each time we change y by a small amount, z also changes by a small amount. At each point, the change in z divided by the change in y is given by the slope of this line. Red indicates a negative slope. Let's now pick a different value for x, and keep x at this new value. Again, at each point, the change in z divided by the change in y is given by the slope of this line. The change in z divided by the change in y is what we refer to as the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Every point on the graph has a value for the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Here, green indicates a positive value and red indicates a negative value. point on the graph also has a value for the partial derivative of z with respect to x. In this case, the value for y is held constant, while the value for x changes. Suppose we represent the slope of this line with an arrow. The length and direction of the arrow indicates if the slope is positive or negative, and by how much. has an arrow that represents the partial derivative of z with respect to x. Every point also has an arrow that represents the partial derivative of z with respect to y. If we add these two arrows together as vectors, then we'll get a new arrow. Let's call this new arrow the gradient of the function z. This arrow always indicates the direction in which z is increasing by the largest amount. The length of this arrow indicates by how much z is increasing in this direction.
much more information is available in the other videos on this channel. Okay. So, itu adalah a bit on the partial derivative on why you ada dalam you punya formulation ni partial derivative plus and plus ni u maksud dia the interaction tu bukannya berlaku pada one axis saja two axis and then at the same time the small dan tadi kalau dia fix the y then still berlaku nya interaction between uh, x and juga z that is what we call the partial derivative okay so i think that's all for now if you have any question you can just ask through the google classroom okay and thank you and have a pleasant uh, weekdays assalamualaikum